Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Bill sent me the story, and I've done a bunch of stories lately about lawsuits filed against manufacturers of food where the packaging implies that the food has certain qualities, and plaintiffs argue and say that, no, it doesn't have those qualities. So the question is like strawberry Pop-Tarts. If they contain no strawberries but only contain strawberry flavoring, can they be considered strawberry Pop-Tarts? And that's the main question behind many of these lawsuits. So I've covered a whole bunch of different things about, you know, does something contain vanilla? Does something contain cocoa? And so here's one where a judge has actually ruled on this, and it's on one of the foods that I've not yet covered. So the headline is, and this is from uh, uh, Reuters, Walmart wins lawsuit claiming its fudge mint cookies lack fudge and mint. And so again, fudge mint cookies, do they contain actual mint? Because there is actually a thing called mint. And do they contain actual fudge? Whatever that is. I'm not even sure what fudge is, technically speaking. I always just think of it as extremely sugary chocolate. But I suppose that could be wrong. Jonathan Stemple wrote this for Reuters. A federal judge in Chicago has dismissed a proposed class action lawsuit accusing Walmart of deceiving shoppers by selling fudge mint cookies that lacked both fudge and mint. But they were cookies. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, a man from Illinois said packaging for the cookies sold under Walmart's Great Value label misled reasonable consumers because the cookies fudge contained no milk fat and its mint contained no mint ingredients. They're talking about actual mint. Now, I'm not sure if there's a law someplace that says fudge has to contain milk fat. But of course, the bakers in my audience would know whether or not fudge has to contain milk fat to be considered fudge. In a decision on Tuesday, a U.S. District Judge said no cases showed that consumers expect fudge to contain milk fat, which was the question I had, and that the plaintiff undercut his argument by asserting that fudge could contain vegetable oils as Walmart's cookies did. So apparently the pleadings even suggested that as far as the fudge argument went, there were some arguments to be made in defense of it. Uh, the judge also agreed with Walmart that mint is a flavor, not an ingredient meaning actual mint included in the manufacture of the cookies. And that, I think, is a common sense reading. Okay, so if I get, you know, mint flavored toothpaste or mint flavored gum, I'm not going to read the ingredients and go, oh, it doesn't actually contain mint leaves. It doesn't actually contain mint leaves. Um, I mean, I know what mint leaves are, but I'm not sure I'd expect that. I would just expect the flavor to be that. The judge likened the case to lawsuits where courts found that vanilla was not required as an ingredient in products such as vanilla ice cream. What mattered, she said, was that products tasted like vanilla. And that's another one of the cases that these attorneys are famous for. Uh, and again, you go into the uh, big supermarket. And you're going to find all kinds of things that are called vanilla. Vanilla. Vanilla yogurt, vanilla ice cream, and so on. And the question is, if it's called vanilla ice cream, does it have to actually contain vanilla, the actual vanilla that, that the flavor name comes from? And the judge is saying, no, it doesn't need to be that way. So the man's lawyer has filed many lawsuits involving vanilla. He said he'll review the decision that his client had not yet decided whether to appeal. And this is always an interesting juncture in litigation. And I know because I've filed lawsuits and I've, I've handled lawsuits through several stages of litigation. So what happened here is the case got dismissed on summary judgment. And that means that the judge looked at the pleadings, read the pleadings, and said, well, based on your own pleadings, you don't win. Because if the allegation simply is that our cause of action hinges on the fact that something that is mint flavored doesn't contain mint, the judge goes, that's not enough. You could prove that you still wouldn't win. So at the point they're at now, if they proceed on an appeal, a couple things have got to happen. One of which is they probably have to post a bond, meaning someone's got to put money up to continue this matter. And there's an even more important question here. Because this judge is talking about whether or not there are cases out there on whether fudge needs to contain milk fat and so on. 
If they take this case up on appeal and the Court of Appeals agrees with this court here, you now have binding legal precedent in that circuit. And this is the kind of precedent that other circuits would look to. It wouldn't bind them. But I assure you that if a Court of Appeals over here rules that this is perfectly fine to sell fudge cookies that are fudge flavored that don't contain milk fat because this law firm handles a lot of these cases. And so there's a chance they could go up and appeal. And if they lose, bam, there go a whole bunch of their other cases. So they might be better off saying, you know something? Let's just drop this case. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm curious. If I had to bet, and I'm not a betting man, if I had to bet, they will not appeal. But we'll see. Walmart spokesperson Randy Hargrove said in an email, we are pleased with the court's ruling and will continue to defend the company against these allegations. Litigation against the food and beverage industry has grown in recent years. And the law firm in this case said that 325 proposed class actions were filed in 2021, but it's unclear if they mean 325 proposed class actions like this one, or, because, I mean, there's more than that class actions filed every year, I assure you. So, but they said that the numbers are growing. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this attorney has sued on behalf of consumers in 26 states. The lawsuit said that Walmart's cookies sold for at least $1.89, but would have sold for less without the alleged misleading representations. That's always the kind of thing that makes you wonder, because I've mentioned before, if you file a lawsuit and you've got a cause of action against somebody, you basically have to have two things to collect. I'm talking about the most basic things. And that is, there has to be some kind of liability. They owe you something. And then there's got to be damages. What are your damages? And damages aren't always easy to calculate, but sometimes they are. Contract action, okay? I hire you to do something, and you do it. And I tell you I'll pay you $10,000, and I don't. Well, you sue me for $10,000. That, that's pretty straight up, straightforward. That's, that's your damages. You were promised $10,000. You weren't paid $10,000. However, as you can imagine... Uh, you're in a car accident and you break your leg. Uh, and it turns out the car accident was caused by somebody else, auto negligence. They owe you. How much do they owe you for a broken leg? Now, believe it or not, there's attorneys out there who are really good at guessing what a jury is going to do on any given case. And it depends on a whole bunch of different things. What you do, your lifestyle, how old you are, how serious the accident was, that kind of thing. But when somebody comes into court and says, here's my case, hypothetically, here's my case. I bought these cookies. I paid $1.89 for them. And I thought they contained fudge. I, they're called fudge. I thought they contained fudge. They don't contain milk fat, which means that they cannot contain the fudge that I'm imagining. So I was misled. What are my damages? Did you eat the cookies? Yes. Okay, so you got some value from them. So your damages, presumably would be $1.89 or less, right? I mean, <laughs> you got something from what you spent, and could your damages be more than $1.89? I mean, just your personal damages. And so they're saying, well, our damages are we overpaid for the cookies. So they cost $1.89, but if they had been labeled as simply cookies and didn't use the word fudge or mint in the title they would have sold for less. And I wouldn't have bought them unless they were priced below $1.89. And the question is, what is the price below $1.89 that you would have paid that would have been fair? And they're making the argument that that is their lawsuit, that difference in value. And by the way, difference in value or diminution in value is something that pops up a lot in warranty claims. And by the way, these often are couched as warranty claims from the UCC the Uniform Commercial Code in the blue books behind me, and in every state across America to varying degrees. It's modified slightly in certain states. And warranties of goods arise in Article 2. And so one measure of damages, if you buy a defective product, so I buy the widget, I buy the widget, it's warranted, and it turns out the widget doesn't work as advertised. A couple different ways you can measure damages. One is, can I fix the widget myself? If I can fix it for a dollar and get it to work, I'm fine. But someone owes me a buck. And I'm just giving examples here. I wouldn't file a lawsuit over a dollar. But 
Some people would in a class action. However, the other measure of damages that's often used is diminution in value. So I bought the widget for a dollar, but it doesn't work. What would I have paid for it if I'd known it didn't work? And that's the diminution in value. Now, it might be I wouldn't have bought it at all. That's a common argument. But for instance, with an automobile, uh, let's suppose I, I, I buy a car and um, I have the car for a while and I discover it's got some weird problem. Well, can you fix the problem? What's that cost? And that's a common way to resolve cases of breach of warranty with an automobile. What's the cost of repair? But on the other hand, let's suppose it's something that can't be repaired. You just have to live with it. And then the question is, how much less is the vehicle worth because of what it does? You might say, Steve, what could it possibly be that cannot be easily repaired that you may have to live with? I'll give you an example. A vehicle that leaks in the rain. Uh, the roof leaks. So, for instance, the vehicle's got a, a, a moon roof. It's got a hole in the roof with glass in it. And water leaks through there. And I can think of a couple of vehicles in the last 20 years where many of the vehicles built that way at the factory leaked and I had clients say that you're driving along on a rainy day, and by the end of the trip, when you come to a stop, you can hear water sloshing around up there, like hearing the oceans roar with a shell to your ear. <laughs> and sometimes when the water sloshes, it would splash on them. And they're told, sorry, we don't know how to fix this. Cannot be fixed. Got to live with it. Well, if you were to sell that vehicle to somebody and be truthful and say, I'm selling you a vehicle and it leaks, the ceiling, the roof fills with water. And uh, when you come to a stop, you'll hear it sloshing around in there. They're going to go, I don't want to buy that vehicle. Or they're going to say, well, I'll buy it from you, but I need like five grand off. So whatever the difference in value is, would be a measure of damages. And there's often no precise way of measuring that. So I'm not actually making fun of them for saying that's what the damages are. I'm more curious to know how they figure that out. Because they say that Walmart cookies sold for at least $1.89, but would have sold for less absent the alleged misleading representations. So are there actually some truthfully advertised cookies nearby that taste like this but aren't advertised like this and how much do they sell for? That's the question. I don't know. Bigger question, will they appeal? I doubt it, but we'll see. Bill sends me thanks a lot from Reuters. Walmart wins lawsuit claiming it's fudge mint cookies lack fudge and mint, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Questions or comments, put them below. Those will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The beaten path is the safest, but the traffic's terrible.